Now for what is tipping the scales of justice after Friday's testimony, and it was really quite a debacle. A taped deposition from surviving witness Paula Belmont was presented during the defendant's case on Monday. Take a look. Absolutely not. He could run and have just like the to trade us. Sorry. If he was a problem. If he was a problem. But you did 100% that he was a problem. Yes. Okay, so she says that Tucker was not her attacker. So did that testimony make up for what we saw on Friday? If so, what does it do for Tucker's case? Does it tip the scales of justice in any way? I'm so pleased to talk about this with the Honorable Kimberly Bando. She is on the couch with me. She's a judge. She's also a defense attorney in the private sector and former prosecutor. And we still have with us remotely celebrity attorney John Phillips, um, certainly no stranger to the courtroom. He's been in the trenches at trial and knows what it's like to uh, be on these big media cases. Uh, you two should know each other, really. <laughs> Both just uh, incredible attorneys. So uh, starting with uh, the judge's patience, judge, my goodness, when you've got somebody pro se, uh, how difficult is that? It's extremely difficult because you want to make sure you give them every opportunity to have their day in court because you know the appellate courts are more inclined to reverse you if they think that you abused your discretion. So he is doing everything in his power to not lose his temper, to try to keep maintaining right on that fine line of we have to move it along, but I also want to let you have your day in court. Mm -hmm. Exactly, and gave him a lot of latitude to see the circus we saw Friday and then that tape deposition on Monday. Um, so, John Phillips here, looking at this witness's credibility, would love for you to give us a really objective assessment. We know it's a nighttime robbery. We know the perpetrators were masked. We know that she was also high on crack cocaine and drunk at the time. Can the jury rely on this non-ID? Can they? Uh, I mean, they can, but you, you've got to go a step back when they tried the Zoom, right? So. So bef before you, you know, most courts prefer if, if a witness is available live, let's do live. If, it, if they're available Zoom, let's do Zoom. If not, let's, let's, go to, let's go to deposition land. And they tried live and she was in the hospital and she attacked the prosecutor. And the only thing the judge could do would say disregard. Like, let's start over and go to the, go to the videotape where there were rules of decorum. So, you know, even though the jury disregard, disregarded that, they don't. You can't unhear that bell. There's, you know, there, there they are. And so it, it's, it, you know, certainly it, there could be a juror that says, all right, there's the reasonable doubt. He wasn't there. Uh, but I just don't, I don't buy it. Right, right, John. I, I mean, this is bad. The way he's cozying up to her in the hospital bed, I mean, you both have had long, <laughs> illustrious careers. Have you ever seen anything like this, Judge Kimberly? <laughs> I've seen things similar, but this kind of takes the cake. Like, you, it, that's how you know it's true, because you can't make it up. You right. just can't even in your wildest dream make this up. Mm -mm. No. And uh, so, you know, he's in the hospital with her, taking the selfie, posting on social media. I mean, he's giving media interviews. Uh, he's talking to our Court TV crew every day, calling himself a victim. I mean, John Phillips, this guy told our Court TV team that he is just as much of a victim as Paula, the woman who had her throat slashed. Uh, what does that make you think when, when, when you know the rules and you know he shouldn't be doing those interviews, but yet, because he's pro se, he's getting away with it? Listen, I represent Joe Exotic, so <laughs> I, I've seen it, right? I, I've, I've been with the people that set him up and gone jet skiing with, with James Garrettson in order to get his cell phones and done all the crazy stuff. And this case fits Key West. It fits the keys. It's insane. Um, yeah, like, it. you know, it... it and, and the judge, God bless him, has to has to have enough decorum, but the guy won't even show up in time for for work and is 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 enjoying the spotlight, and that should ensue. 
Uh, right. You're, you're right, John Phillips. And you know what? And he could have a warrant. I mean, the judge has been telling him 9 a.m. sharp. We're just a couple minutes away. Uh, we'll see. Uh, judge Kimberly's going to stay with us. We'll see if uh, <laughs> if you would issue that warrant. Uh, we'll watch the clock together. Uh, John Phillips, we've got to do a segment about Joe Exotic. We need an update on him. So let's make that happen, uh, my friend. We love having you on opening statements always. Thank you so much Absolutely. for being with us today. And uh, that is all for this episode of Opening Statements. You can watch it, share it, just go to CourtTV.com. We've got the Shows tab now. The website's got a nice update. Check it out if you haven't been there. Uh, you can just click on that, and there it will.